In the last lecture, we learned how electric potential energy is turned into other useful forms of energy. Electrical systems are very efficient, but of course, we can never get more energy than we initially put in the system. So, we need to measure how much electric energy is stored within a system. Otherwise, we will never achieve the actual amount of energy we want. Too much energy, it could be very dangerous, and too little energy, it's just useless. So, having the right amount of energy is very necessary. But before we try to measure electric potential energy, let's discuss something more familiar, gravitational potential energy. This lecture is not a part of the electrical course syllabus, but will help us understand a few things better and easier. We will try to draw an analogy between the gravitational and electric potential energy, and hopefully we will find a way to measure electric potential energy. As you can see, Mario is currently trying to collect that power-up from the highest platform. But climbing higher or just even going upstairs requires some amount of energy. You have definitely noticed that in real life, otherwise you could just use the stairs to the 13th or 14th floor and feel not tired at all. First, I want you to think, why does Mario or you require energy when you want to go upstairs? Well, of course, it's because gravity is constantly pulling you downwards and you are trying to go upwards. So you are working against gravity and as we have seen in the last lecture, when we work against something, that energy gets stored as potential energy. The same thing is going on here. You are working against gravity and storing gravitational potential energy. But how much exactly? So my question is, if that platform Mario trying to reach is 4 meters high and Mario weighs 89 kilos, how much energy would Mario need to have to collect that power up? How would you quantify that value? Well, the answer to this problem would be gravitational potential energy. If we recall from high school physics, the formula for gravitational potential energy was U equals mgh. It's perfectly fine if you don't remember that. I'll just gloss over what every symbol here means. Gravitational potential energy U is measured by multiplying the object's mass m gravitational acceleration g and height h which we will measure from the ground for our purpose m would be 89 kilograms h would be 4 meters and g would be 9.8 meters per second square gravitational acceleration g just means how much a freely falling object speeds up every second I don't know about Mario world, but it's roughly 9.8 meters per second square anywhere in our world. So if Mario reaches that platform, he will have a gravitational potential energy of 89 kilograms times 9.8 meter per second square times 4 meters. By the way, since we are using standard units, we can just use joules, the standard unit for energy and work. After multiplying everything, we get 3488.8 joules. So Mario must have 3488.8 joules of energy if he wants to reach the top. We should always remember that this value is measured with respect to the ground because when we measured the height, we measured from the ground. That doesn't mean we always have to measure the height from the ground. Uh, there might not even be ground in some instances. For example, if we were trying to measure how much energy would Mario need to go from this lower platform to the higher one, it would make more sense to measure the height from the lower platform rather than the ground. We can use whatever reference is more convenient for us. So, when we measured the gravitational potential energy to be 3488.8 joules, what it really meant was Mario has 3488.8 joules more gravitational potential energy if he were on the ground. And Mario himself had to provide that energy, that's why he is tired. 
There's another way to look at it. If, as I said, Mario has now 3488.8 joules more energy on the higher platform than he was on the ground, that means he should have zero joules of gravitational potential energy when he was on the ground. And you can actually see that for yourself. If he was on the ground, the height from the ground to ground would have been zero. Which does mean the potential energy he would get from our formula would really just be zero joules. So it matches up with what we were saying earlier. The value of potential energy just says how much more potential energy there is than the reference point has. We took the ground as a reference, so it makes sense Mario would have zero joules of potential energy if he was on the ground. Now what if we change the reference? That means the value will be different since the reference point was changed. For example, what if we took the lower platform as a reference? Let's say the height of the higher platform measured from the lower platform is 2 meters. Then the potential energy would have been 89 times 9.8 times 2 joules, which equals to 1744.4 joules. The value of the same platform changed from 3488.8 to 744 because we are now using a different reference point than before. This now means that Mario has 1744.4 joules more energy than if Mario was on the lower platform. The point is, potential energy is a relative quantity. It just represents how much energy it has more than the reference point has. And if Mario was on the same height as the reference, it will have zero potential energy like we saw earlier when Mario was on the ground. Let's get back to our ground reference. Now, what if the power up Mario trying to get was in a 1 meter deep pit? What will be the potential energy down there? Well, we saw higher place has a higher potential value, so lower place should have a lower potential value. If Mario was on the ground, he would have zero joules of potential energy. That means if he goes even lower, he should have a negative potential energy. Yes, that's entirely possible. Negative potential energy is a thing. It just means that he won't need energy to reach the bottom of the pit, but rather when he tries to get back to the ground, it would cost him some energy. If we just consider the height to be negative below the reference point, our u equals mgh formula will just work as fine as before. Using that formula, now Mario would have a negative 872.2 joules of energy in that 1 meter deep pit compared to the ground. This gives us quite a nice way to measure the work done while an object moves from one position to another. When we say work done, what we mean is the amount of energy that was converted into some other form. For example, if our Mario jumps from 4 meter height to the ground, his potential energy would decrease from 3488.8 to 0 joules. And that difference, 3488.8 joules of energy will be converted into some other forms of energy. If instead Mario jumped into that 1 meter deep pit, his potential energy would decrease by 4361 joules. That means this time Mario would have converted an amount of 4361 joules into some other forms of energy. In this case, it's just kinetic energy while falling, and if he was real, maybe sound and heat energy after he touches the bottom of the pit. So we say he did uh, 4361 joules of work. In this manner, you can calculate any amount of work done due to potential energy. It even works for electrical systems. Here's something to note though, uh, even though potential energy is a relative quantity, work done 
or the amount of energy converted into some other types of energy is not dependent on the reference point. Amount of energy converted is an absolute quantity and that's what we are after. We can check that by taking another reference point and we will see that we'll have the same amount of energy. We still have a few things to talk about gravitational potential energy and how we measure them. But it's been a long lecture so I think we will discuss that in the next lecture. It's absolutely necessary to understand this lecture if you want to have a clear concept. So I suggest rewatching a second time if you don't get something on the first watch. With that, uh, see you in the next lecture.